Hello viewers, welcome you all to my channel. I'm Hashim Ali Khan. So this is the last and final video on the problems of skewness. So last two, three videos have completed the theory as well as so many problems. Two more problems in this video. That will be the end. So before starting any video, you must first of all watch the first theory video. Without understanding the concept, you should not go for problems. The first video I have explained you about the detail of skewness, why it is calculated, what are the methods of calculating skewness. It's a measure which shows the shape of the distribution or pattern of the distribution. How the values are surrounded around the mean. If whether the distribution is symmetrical or asymmetrical. Symmetrical means equal number of items are lying above and below the middle value that is central value average if equal number of items are lying above and below the average it is called symmetrical when it is symmetrical the distribution will be a bell shaped curve then asymmetrical means equal number of items are not there below and above more items are there that may above sight and less items below sight like that so if the number of items are not equally spread around the mean then it is called asymmetrical or skewed so all these things i have explained in the first video so watch the first video be acquainted be thorough on the concept then you start watching two methods are there carl pearson and bowling the formula only two formulas are there carl pearson he has given mean minus mode by standard deviation and bowling quartile based skewness that is q3 plus q1 minus 2 median divided by q3 minus q1 that's all so now i'm going to start the seventh problem before starting the problem i expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems which i have given in the link under my description so always before watching the problems keep ready the problems take a screenshot of the solutions of seventh and eighth problem then I'll explain each and every point. Come on, seventh problem. The following table gives the distribution of monthly income of 500 workers in a factory. So work in a factory 500 workers are working we have classified according to monthly income monthly incomes are 50 to 100 10 workers 100 to 150 25 workers 150 to 200 145 workers 200 to 250 220 workers 250 to 370 workers 300 to 350 30 workers calculate Carl Pearson's coefficient of skewness it's a straightforward problem it's a continuous series class interval and frequency is given see here. calculation of Carl Pearson's coefficient of skewness first monthly income whatever is given in the problem the same class interval I have taken number of workers frequency the same thing I have copied total 500 workers now middle value middle value we require to calculate the mean for calculating arithmetic mean we require middle value how to find out lower limit plus upper limit divided by 2 50 plus 100 divided by 2 100 plus 150 divided by 2 150 by plus 200 divided by 2 we will get the mid values now multiply frequency with mid value to get FM FM F into M 10 into 75 750 25 into 125 3125 145 into 175 25,375 like that you calculate FM Take the total of FM 1,7750. 107,750 is the total of FM. And how much is the N value? 500. Now we know the formula of arithmetic mean. Summation FM by N. Here summation FM 1,7750 divided by 500 to 15.5. This is the arithmetic mean. Here the mean is in fraction. So we will take an assumed mean to take the deviations. We will assume them. We will take an assumed mean. Assumed mean should be nearest to the actual mean. Actual mean is 215. So from these mid values, you can select any value which should be near to 215. 
तो यू कैन ऑब्जर्व टू ट्वेंटी फाइव इज वेरी नियर टू ट्वेंटी फाइव इज वेरी नियर टू टू फिफ्टी सो आई है Three twenty-five minus two twenty-five, hundred. That's all. D deviations. Now multiply F into D. Frequency into D. Ten into minus one fifty is minus fifteen hundred. Twenty-five into minus hundred, minus twenty-five hundred. One forty-five into minus fifty, minus seven thousand two fifty. Two twenty into zero, zero. Seventy into fifty, three thousand five hundred. Thirty into hundred, three thousand. We got F D. Take the total of FD, you'll get minus four thousand seven fifty. On calculator, you find out the total. Now FD square, FD square means FD into D. So this is FD, this is D. Multiply these two columns. One fifty into fifteen hundred, two lakh twenty five thousand. Minus into minus will become plus. Minus into minus plus. So similarly, hundred into twenty five hundred, two lakh fifty. Fifty into seven thousand two fifty, three sixty two five. Zero, fifty into three thousand five hundred one seventy five hundred into three thousand three lakh. That's all. Take the total of F D square. It comes to thirteen lakh twelve thousand five hundred. That's all. Now easily we can find out standard deviation. The formula sigma is equal to summation F D square by n minus summation F D by n whole square under root. Here, this is all. all the values we have. Summation of this for thirteen twelve five hundred divided by five hundred minus minus four thousand seven fifty divided by five hundred whole square under root. Now divided you get two six two five. Now four thousand seven fifty divided by five hundred. Now square it. After dividing this, square it. You will get ninety point two five. Remember minus into minus will become plus. When you square minus, it will become plus. So ninety point two five deduct two six two five minus ninety point two five twenty five thirty four point seven five under root fifty point three four six is the standard deviation. Two items we have calculated. We have calculated the mean, and we have calculated the standard deviation. Now we have to calculate the mode. Mode can be found either by inspection or by grouping an analysis table. But here already so much time is required for calculating mean and standard deviation. We will not go for grouping and all the system. By inspection, we can find out the mode. Mode. The mode is that value which occurs more number of times, or the value whose frequency is highest. Now see the frequency column. What is the highest frequency here? Two twenty is the highest frequency. This two twenty is against which class? Two hundred to two fifty. So we can say the model class is two hundred to two fifty. The mode lies between two hundred to two fifty. By inspection, the highest frequency is two twenty against which the class is two hundred to two fifty. Model class two hundred to two fifty. Now we apply the formula. Mode is equal to L plus delta one divided by delta one plus delta two into I. L stands for lower limit two hundred. Delta one means F four minus F one. What is F O frequency of model class? This is the model class, two hundred to two fifty. The frequency of the model class is F O. So two twenty is F O. And preceding model class is F one. So one forty five is F one. And succeeding frequency is F two. Seventy is F two. So here delta one means f one f four minus f one. So two twenty minus one forty five. Delta two is equal to f four minus f two. Two twenty minus seventy. One fifty. I width width of the model class. Here model class is two hundred to two fifty. What is the difference here? Fifty. So I is equal to fifty. Now substitute mod is equal to two hundred seventy five divided by seventy five plus one fifty into fifty. You will get two sixteen point six seven mode. All the three we got. 
we got the mean value, we got the standard deviation and we got the mode. Simply substitute in the formula of Carl Pearson. Carl Pearson's coefficient of skewness, SKP, is mean minus mode by standard deviation. Mean is 215.5, mode is 216.67, standard deviation is 50.346. So SKP is minus 0 0.02, that's all. So this is the end of problem number 7. Now last and final problem, problem number 8. <coughs> Calculate the Carl Pearson's coefficient of skewness from the following. Again, we have to apply Carl Pearson. Now, one new point is there in this problem. If you closely watch, if you closely see this uh, data given, marks 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, continuous series. Number of students are 10, 40, 20, 0, 10, 40, 16, 40. So what is the peculiarity you will find here? The highest frequency is 40, but it is occurring twice. That means it's a bimodal problem. Mode is ill-defined. Because 2 times 40 is occurring. Highest frequency is 40. It is occurring twice. It's a bimodal problem. If it's a bimodal problem, if the mode is ill-defined, then Carl Pearson has given an alternative formula to calculate skewness. The alternative formula is more uh, skewness SKP is equal to 3 into mean minus median by standard deviation. 3 into mean minus median. Original formula is this one. Mean minus mode divided by standard deviation. But if mode cannot be calculated, then alternative formula is there. That alternative formula is this one, 3 into mean minus median divided by standard deviation. So Carl Pearson said, if mode cannot be ascertained, if mode is ill-defined, by model series, then apply this formula to calculate SKP. We don't require mode, we require median. So here, by inspection it appears that mode is ill-defined because the highest frequency is 40 which appears twice. Hence, we apply the following formula to calculate Carl Pearson's coefficient of skewness. SKP 3 into mean minus median by standard deviation. So first of all, marks are given 0 to 10, 10 to 20. Same thing I have copied. Number of students, frequency 10, 40, 20, 0, 10, 40, 16, 40. Same as it is. Total is 150. Now I require mid value to calculate mean. So mid value, M. So 0 plus 10 divided by 2, 5. 10 plus 20 divided by 2, 15. 20 plus 30 divided by 2, 25. Like this, mid values we have calculated. Now multiply F into M. FM. 10 into 5, 50. 40 into 15, 600. 20 into 25, 500. 0 into 35, 0. Like this summation, FM. 5890. 5890 is the total of FM. And total N is 150. Mean formula x bar is equal to summation fm by n so 5890 divided by 150 you will get 39.27 this is the arithmetic mean one item we got but the mean is in fraction here so we will take an assumed mean to take the deviations because it is fraction assume mean so any mid value you take which is nearest to 39.27 so I can see here 35 is very near to 39.27. So I have taken assumed mean 35. Now D. CF also I have opened. Because I require median. To calculate median we need CF column. Cumulative frequency. 10. 10 plus 40, 50. 50 plus 20, 70. 70 plus 0, 70. 70 plus 10, 80. 80 plus 40, 120. 120 plus 16, 136. 136 plus 14, 150. CF call. Not D. Deviations. M minus A. A is how much? 35. Assumed mean is 35. So M is 5. 5 minus 35 minus 30. 15 minus 35 minus 20. 25 minus 35 minus 10. 35 minus 35 0. 45 minus 35 10. 55 minus 35 20. 65 minus 35 30. 75 minus 35 40. This is a D. Now multiply F into D. Frequency is here. And deviation. So 10 into minus 30. Minus 300. 40 into minus 20. Minus 800. 
20 into minus 10 minus 200 0 into 0 is 0 then 10 into 10 100 like this we have calculated FD take the total of FD comes to 640 now FD square FD into D multiply these two columns 300 into 30 9000 800 into 20 16000 200 into 10 2000 like this total of summation FD square 80,800 that's so now we can easily calculate standard deviation summation FD square by n minus summation FD by n whole square under root so here this is the problem FD square 80,800 divided by 150 minus 640 divided by 150 whole square under root so 80,800 by 150, 538.67. 540 by 150 into is equal to 18.2. You will get 22.81 as the standard deviation. So we have calculated the mean, we have calculated standard deviation. Now we need the median. Mode we cannot calculate. Ill defined. So median. Median class is equal to size of n by 2. n is how much? 150. 150 by 2, 75. Locate 75 or next higher in CF column. Corresponding class is the median class. 75, this is the CF column. 75 or higher means 80. The higher is 80. So which class is for 80? 40 to 50. The median class is 40 to 50. Now median formula L plus N by 2 minus CF by F into I. So L stands for lower limit 40. N by 2 already you have calculated 75. CF. Cumulative frequency of the class preceding the median class. Median class is 40 to 50. Before 40 to 50, 30 to 40. What is the CF of 30 to 40? 70. 70 and frequency of modern class is 10. So 70 by 10. 70 by 10 into 10 with i is 10 so this 10 this 10 will get cancelled so 75 minus 70 is 5 so 45 is the median median is 45 now Carl Pearson's coefficient of skewness SKP is equal to 3 into mean minus median divided by standard deviation 3 into mean how much is mean 39.27 is the mean median 45 Divided by standard deviation 22.81. So, first you subtract 20 39.27 minus 45, you get minus 5.73 into 3, you get minus 17.19. Divide by 22.81, SKP is minus 0 0.75. That's all. Eight problems I've explained you on the concept of skewness. So, before this skewness, already two topics I have covered up measure of central tendency measure of dispersion and this one measure of skewness so so far three topics i have completed inshallah in the next video i'll take up the next topic in the subject of statistics for management so give a like to the video share my channel in your group in your friend circle so that more students can watch the video and enhance the knowledge get a command on the subject get a confidence on the subject and do subscribe my channel uh, and one more information I want to pass to you that I have started a second channel by name Hans Accounting Institute. This is a channel name. You can go to the search and type this name Hans Accounting Institute. You can find so many videos which are very much helpful to everybody. Particularly this channel I have prepared for IGCSC students. Those who are pursuing the I mean, courses of Cambridge and Adexel Pearson. For them, it will be specifically made. But everybody, anybody can watch the video and enhance the knowledge. And do subscribe that second channel too. Inshallah, we'll continue the next topic in the next video.